The Sierpinski Triangle is one of my all-time favourite shapes. It's a fractal, and there are a couple of different ways to draw it. Uh, drawing fractals is a risky business because they are infinitely detailed, but you can draw a few iterations. So one classic way would be to start with a triangle. Classically equilateral, but you will get a Sierpinski-ish triangle no matter how you start. And then with each of these edges, you can take the midpoint and you join those together to make another triangle inside. And the effect is one, the Triforce from Zelda, but two, we have a now triangle made of triangles. As it's a fractal, we can now repeat that process with the three triangles which are in the same orientation, they're facing up way, um, as the first one. So we kind of find those midpoints, join them together, and we just keep going. Okay, I'm gonna draw for a while, we can time lapse this. We have a triangle made of triangles made of triangles. So this is the third iteration. Let's go one more. Okay, fourth iteration of the Sierpinski triangle. So that's kind of going from the outside boundary in the way. Other things you could do would be start with one teeny little triangle, like this little one up here, and work your way down. So, okay, I've got one little triangle and then make a copy of it down here another copy, and then take this and copy that and move it into a, the two next positions. And then take this and copy that again. <laughs> okay, so we've got outside working in, we've got little kind of working down, and there are loads of other amazing mathematical ways that you can create this shape. It just pops up everywhere. Ben Sparks did a really beautiful video about the chaos theory, um, and it just kind of appears as if out of magic. But the fact this is genuinely coming from rolling a dice on a computer and doing it quickly makes me, I don't know, just slightly disturbed about reality. Also, the Tower of Hanoi will generate the Sierpinski Triangle. But there is one method for constructing the Sierpinski Triangle. I don't know why we're not talking about it. Strap in, we're gonna need to go on a journey. <laughs> so there's a concept called constructible polygons. A polygon would be a shape that's made of straight edges. Um, and when we talk about constructability in maths, it's very specifically using Euclidean tools. So you are allowed to use a compass to create circles and you can use it to kind of pick up uh, lengths as well. And you are allowed to use a straight edge. Now, a straight edge, different from a ruler because you're not supposed to have any markings on it. So pretend we cannot see any markings there, we can just use it as a straight line. And a good question would be, which polygons can you make with these Euclidean tools, with a compass and straight edge? So equilateral triangle, quite nice and easy. Start with a random line, set your compass to pick up that edge, little construction line, bring it over to the other side. That's going to be the point where they meet and just join them together. Okay, equilateral triangle done. And you can draw a square fairly easily um, and from the square you can start dividing them in half. So you can make um, a regular polygon with sides four, um, then eight and 16. And so all of the powers of two are quite easy because you just keep splitting the lines in half. But this triangle here is the first in a series of more interesting ones, the odd constructible polygons. So we can make three, we can make five, I'll attempt it. So in theory, we start with a circle, and then you look very closely at where on earth you stabbed that paper for the center of the circle. Gotcha. Okay, we're gonna draw in the diameter. Then we need to draw a line which is at right angles to this, so kind of split it into little quarters. And I'm going to do that by making my compass a little bit more than halfway, doing another construction line, keeping that same length. So this creates a perpendicular line. I would like to know the halfway point on this line, the midpoint. So same thing again. I'm going to set my compass to some random over halfway. <laughs> okay, now if I take these two points and join them together, I'll find the midpoint of this line. Perfect. So that means I can now 
draw a smaller circle in here. So this circle, we've halved the diameter, we've quartered the area, it's a smaller circle. I now want to draw a line which goes from this point here where the diameter meets through the center of this circle and to the edge here. So I'm using my straight edge to pick up that point. Okay, is the compass long enough? Just, okay. We're gonna window wiper that. There we go, cool. <laughs> There's nothing that can't be achieved with a little bit of um, ingenuity and masking tape. Okay, so now I have this point here on the edge, this point here on the edge, this point up here. Would you believe that if I pick up this line here, that is one fifth of the way around the circle? So I can kind of project that down here. I can pick this one up. So now we've done it. We've got five equidistant points around the circle. And if I join them together, we will have a beautiful polygon. The thing I love about constructability is it's so pure. Like we did not do any measurements. This could have been done on any scale, at any size. This is like the most distilled way to get yourself a pentagon. So we've shown we can do it for three. We've got the triangle. We can do it for five. Voila. Can we construct seven? Nope. Can we do nine? No. The next odd sided polygon that you can construct with these simple and beautiful tools is 15. Then after that would be 17, 51, 85, and so on. You might think we have strayed far from the Serpinski triangle path here. I know, I know. We're gonna need another piece of paper. So you may have thought when we started drawing a Serpinski triangle with actual tools that it was going to be geometric. No, we're going to flip over to numeric for a while. I'm going to write down the list of odd constructible polygons. So one, I mean, it is just a dot. We can do three sided. We can do five sided. 15, 17, 51. Now what I'm going to do is take these numbers and convert them into binary. I'm doing this on the fly, why? <laughs> this is gonna take a hot minute. For binary, rather than base 10, we're now in base two. So we've got two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two. Have fun time-lapsing this. Two to the power of five, that would be excessive, surely. Okay, so this gives us one. This is two, this is four, eight, 16, and 32. Okay. So if we want to make one out of binary, it is just the number one. Three in binary, we need a two. We need a one. There we go, that's three. Five is going to be ooh, four. I'll have one of those, please. No twos. Give me a one. Fifteen. So close to sixteen, but not quite. We're going to take the one. Uh, no fours. That's entirely a lie. Yeah, give me them all. Give me a eight. A four, that goes to 12, 13, 14, 15, cool. 17, we need one 16. Don't need any of these. We need a one. 51, okay. We're gonna need a 32. We're gonna need a 16. Uh, so that's a 48. And yeah, don't need these. 50, 51, cool. Okay, so we've got odd constructible numbers converted into binary. I'm going to put them in a more pleasing triangle. You might have noticed there's a little bit of symmetry going on. We've got one, 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 zero, one. The row with all ones. The row, we've got one, zero, 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 one. And then one, one, zero, zero, one, one. Okay. If you color in these ones, if you kind of block out these ones in this triangle, it will create a Serpinski triangle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. So you can see we've got this little triangle of ones up top here, and then we've got another triangle of ones here, and then we continue on more ones. And it's a bit grainy, it's a bit low resolution, but you can imagine, okay, maybe there's like a bit in there as well. <laughs> but this will continue down the way. Like this to create our Serpinski triangle using the odd constructible polygons until row 33. I'm sorry, it's, it's so beautiful. Like I had to show you because it's, it's so nice that 
these, these two seemingly disjointed things come together to create um, a fractal, but it is a brief flirtation. They only do this until the, the 30 second row. After that, this pattern kind of collapses. And that's to do with something called Fermat primes. We don't have loads of them. Uh, we, we only have five of them. And you can tell if a polygon is constructible, if its number of edges is the product of a power of two, that's why all of the powers of two, the even constructible polygons, super easy, all powers of two. But if it's a product of a power of two and uh, any number of distinct Fermat primes, that will give you a constructible odd polygon. That's the condition for it. And we just don't have that many Fermat primes. Um, and after this, on row 33, the next Fermat number is a not prime. So yeah, it, it breaks down after that. But I don't know. I think you can enjoy it while it's, while it's here at the start. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> How do you get an odd constructible polygon? So the number of sides, n, needs to be equal to some sort of power of 2 multiplied by any number of distinct Fermat primes. Now, to be a Fermat prime, it needs to be in the form 2 to the power of 2 to the power of n plus 1. That's how you get your Fermat primes. And we only have five of them. <laughs> so the five Fermat primes that we have so far are 3. So you can see if you put a 0 in here for n, you'd have 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, and then plus 1 gets you the 3. Next one would be 5. Things are going nice. 17, also prime. Bit of a jump, 257. And our final Fermat prime that we know is 65,537. These are all of the Fermat primes that we have. So when you're creating um, odd constructible polygons, you can see three and five, they're right there. Um, so in that case, you're using two to the power of zero, which is one, and you're just doing one times three, one times five. We can get 15 because if you do distinct Fermat primes, three times five, times one being a power of two, that gets you 15. So 15 is possible. But since we only have five of these Fermat primes, that means if you're looking at all of the different combinations that you can have, um, we can only make 31 um, odd constructible polygons. That's all we have so far. So you'd have um, kind of like two to the power of, let's just call it M. <laughs> mm. Two to the power of M minus one would be the number of uh, combinations you could do for this. So two to the power of five is 32, take away one. We only have 31 odd constructible polygons. Um, and that really limits how far we can take that pattern. And like I say, after that, the next Fermat number is not prime. Two, nine, seven. It gets a bit bigger, but this is in fact I'm sure you can all see it, 641 times 6,700,417. So it has two prime factors, it's a composite number, and that's, that's where it breaks down. We don't know if there are any more Fermat primes to be discovered. Maybe they just stop after five. Um, we haven't found any. Mystery. Do you want to solve the mysteries of the universe? Well, why not start by honing your math and science skills with Brilliant? I'm always struck by how elegantly brilliant lessons move from step to step. I feel like I'm on a journey of discovery, but never seem to get left behind. I always feel a bit smarter doing these, and I often think to myself that'd be great not just for new learners, but for people at the crossroads, maybe someone looking for a new vocation in life. Is that you? Brilliant covers all the latest topics such as data analysis, programming, AI of course. Now look, I'm glad you watch videos like Numberphile, but these lessons where you interact with the content, I mean, they're hard to beat. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash Numberphile or scan the QR code on the screen. And of course, I'll pop the link in the description too. That link's also going to get you 20% off an annual premium subscription. Once you have a 15 gun, it was an open problem from antiquity. For, two, for 2,000 years, people played with the ruler and compass and worried about that. 
And then something amazing happened. It got connected with the rest of mathematics. That often happens in mathematics. When, when a problem gets connected to something else, it becomes accessible. 